Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to Women of Grace Bible Study Group. And uh, once again, I'm 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 excited to be among the the women of God, and uh, we're studying out of the book called The Preparation of the Bride. And here we are learning how to be the brides of Christ. In chapter and study one, we're learning about the love that Christ has for his bride. And I'm I'm so pleased that we were able to come together today on Wednesday. Our our usual study is on Sunday evenings, but due to the fact that we all were sick, I was sick, um, we uh, skipped that day. So we're taking we're making up for Sunday today. Uh, we're going to go into prayer. Get your swords in your hand. Um, this is going to be uh, exciting. Um, study right now. We're on question six, and after the prayer and um, a brief um, song, we're going to jump right into the study. Um, Sister Lisa's on the line, Sister Janina's on the line, and uh, I'm just so excited that we can come together as one, for the scripture says that where two or three are gathered in Christ's name, there he is in the midst. So um, we thank you, Lord Yeshua, that you are here with us at this Bible study. We ask that you would prepare our hearts, that you would write your word upon the table of our hearts, that you would illuminate our minds and our hearts to receive what the word is saying to us as individuals. Help us, Lord, to be able to walk in this truth that we're getting ready to study on. And we're studying on, Father, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have made it made a way that we can come together and share your word. We thank you, Father, for this women's group. We thank you, Lord God, for Lisa and Janine. We thank you, Father, and we pray and we uplift Lisa, who just, uh, her husband just passed, Father, and we just ask that you would comfort her on tonight, Father, that you would be with her and be her comforter on tonight. We thank you, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach the Christ, amen. Um, as we go into this study, I ask that you all would reserve your questions until we finish, until um, I am finished with actually the commentary notes, the notes I took on question six. We're just going to deal with question six today. So I'm going to throw you out, I'm going to throw the question out there before I put the song on. Question six says, what should you do? if you do not have this intense desire. And we left off on having the desire of Christ. Turn your swords to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19, and read that while we listen to this song. I'm 
a little longer for us to come to that realization that Christ is all that we need. Well, last week, last Sunday, uh, the previous Sunday, December the 13th, we left off on question six, but we're going to go, I'm going to give you a recap of what we talked about on December the 13th. We talked about that strong desire, that, that desire to want to have a relationship with Christ. And and question six is, is pointing the question that if you don't have that desire within your heart, it's telling you, actually Paul is telling you how to obtain that desire, that longing for fellowship and relationship with Christ Jesus. If you have your swords on Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 19, this is a prayer that um, we should all pray for one another as well as for ourselves. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, it reads, and I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Bible, Glory to Your Name, and if you don't have an Amplified Bible, you can look on the website, um, on the website uh, for if you don't have a Bible program, you can either download um, 
you can download Bible Gateway that has the Amplified Bible on it. Also, you can download the Bible and my Bible from your Google app for your phone. If you do not have a Bible program already on your computer, look, go to the website on the Women of Grace uh, study group um, and look at the link and click on the link and download that free Bible. It's, it's a lot of uh, tools out there that the Lord has provided for us to be able to seek his face and study his word. You know, praise God. Here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, it reads, For I, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a prayer that we can pray not only for ourselves, but for one another, that the Lord would bring us to that understanding, that revelation of who he is. Now, the question what should you do if you do not have the intense desire? The answer is pray that the Father would give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him. Now notice the word, a spirit of revelation. Spirit of revelation. The cross-reference for that is Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, which we're getting ready to break down. Uh, from the commentary notes that I have studied on, and it reads, Therefore, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not sense praying and asking on your behalf that you may be filled with the full knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Here Paul is talking to the Colossians, and his prayer is, is that he's praying that they will be filled with the full knowledge of his will, that they will have spiritual wisdom and understanding. You know, and, 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 John, and James, I believe, it talks about the wisdom of this world, that the world has a wisdom that we are not to obtain, but we are to seek God and earnestly require of him his wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Now here, the note from um, the commentary of Witness Lee, it says for Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, spiritual wisdom and understanding are of the spirit of God. In our spirit, God places his wisdom within our spirit. In contrast to uh, philosophy, which is merely in the darkened human mind, wisdom is in our spirit and is for us to perceive God's eternal will. Spiritual understanding is in our mind, renewed by the spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit. And it's for us to understand and interpret what we perceive in our spirit. See, without the Holy Spirit of God, we can never understand the will of God. This is our regenerated spirit, beloved, and dwelt by the spirit of Yahweh. Such a spirit is given to us by Yahweh that we may have wisdom and revelation to know him and his economy. It is by the Holy Spirit that we can know who Yahweh is. If you recall in the Gospels when Christ gave up the ghost, how the curtain in the temple ripped in two. That was an indication that the wall that separated us from God, hallelujah, was destroyed. 
It was ripped in two, which in turn, because of what Christ did on the cross, his death opened up a way for us to come boldly before the throne of God. We don't need, uh, as in the Old Testament, they had to have priests go before God on behalf of the people. But because of what Christ did for mankind, we can now enter into God's throne with boldness, mind you, also with humility. And because of what Christ has done, God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit and to and the Holy Spirit fill us with knowledge of the Father's will. If you notice that wisdom is a spirit. It is not, uh, you cannot obtain this from philosophy, from studying um, the things of the world. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal to you the rhema word out of the Bible, which is God's oracle. Now, turn your swords to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. Praise the Lord. And it reads, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22 reads, In whom you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in spirit. See, the body of Christ, believers, it is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. We have been created spiritual beings. But because of what Adam did, he disobeyed the command of God. And it was one simple command that God gave Adam to follow. And he broke that command. Um, God wants us to be filled with his spirit. The Bible says in Romans that as many as are led by the spirit are the sons of God. And this takes practice, beloved. This takes yielding to the Holy Spirit, to be able to walk by the Spirit. Because if you remember, we were not born again when we came out of our mother's womb. Uh, we, we learned the world ways, ways of doing things, the way they think, the system itself. But when we come to Christ and we yield our hearts, our life to him, and allow him to be the king on the throne of our hearts, the Bible says that we have been born again. And when we are born again of spirit and water, that we are a spiritual being now, which means that we need a spiritual teacher. And Christ said that he was not going to leave us comfortless, but that he was going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us the will of God for our life. He is the one that opens up the rhema word that we may be able to understand what he is saying. Many today in the church, beloved, do not have the desire to want to seek out God, to have a relationship with him, an intimate relationship with him. And what I mean by that is picking up your word and reading. The only way you're going to know about who Yahweh is you have to read his word, and the Holy Spirit will illuminate that word for you. Now, in whom you also are being built together, we as believers, the bride, are being built together into a dwelling place of God in spirit. Now, Witness Lee says about this particular verse, he says, the believer's human spirit, which is indwelt by God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and abides in the home of our spirit. Hallelujah. God does not want to take away our, our identity of who we are, but he wants to recreate our identity to be in the image of Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God's spirit is the dweller, not the dwelling place. The dwelling place is the believer's spirit. God's spirit dwells in our spirit. Therefore, the dwelling place of God is in our spirit. It cohabits with our spirit. 
Now, verse 21 says that the holy temple is in the Lord. And this verse, the dwelling place of God is in the spirit. This indicates that for the building of God's dwelling place, the Lord is one with our spirit, and our spirit is one with the Lord. Our spirit is where the building of the church, the dwelling place of God, takes place. Mind you, beloved, the building where we go to fellowship and worship is not the main focal point. The body of Christ, the building of the the body of Christ, the church, is us as individuals. As I read and meditated on this scripture, the Lord began to show me about the body. All believers in one make up one body. That is a mighty big body. And each body has a part to play within the ministry of the gospel of Christ. The hands have something to do. The eyes have something to do. The mind has something to do. Every part of the body of Christ has a function to play within building of the kingdom of God. Now turn your swords to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5. I pray that the, the Holy Spirit is re- giving you more revelation on Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19 as we go through this study. Now Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5 reads, which in other generation was made known to the sons of men, hallelujah, as it has now been revealed to us, his holy apostles and prophets, in spirit. In the Old Testament, during the time from, from all the way back from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, what we have today was not revealed. But because of what, like I said, because of what Christ did, he has brought, given us the Holy Spirit to reveal the mysteries of God's will unto us. They did not have, our forefathers did not have that. The word of God said that if you are a born again believer, that you are, you are the seed of Abraham. And we have that promise that God made unto Abraham. But God's mysteries were not fully uh, shown to them, the men of old, as they are today. The human spirit of the apostles and the prophets, a spirit regenerated and indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. We have this today. It can be considered the mingled spirit. The Holy Spirit mingled with our spirit, the human spirit, mingled with God's spirit. Such a mingled spirit is the means by which the New Testament revelation concerning Christ and the church is revealed to the apostles and prophets. We need the same kind of spirit to see such a revelation. Beloved, without the Holy Spirit, You cannot receive the revelation that God wants to show you. It is by the Holy Spirit that draws us to intimacy with Christ. And the word of God says in in the Gospel of John that the Holy Spirit does not come to speak about himself, but the Holy Spirit comes to speak about who Christ is. Christ, hallelujah, Hallelujah is the subtopic. He is the topic. He is the main focus. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, the Holy Spirit, does, he never goes outside of what the scripture says. He is the only one that can reveal to you who Christ is, who Christ's personality, his personality, his characteristics. Seeing that God, Yahweh, wants us to be transformed into Christ's image, then we need to know who Christ is. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, it reads, it says this, and that you 
being renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you being renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, the more you read the word of God, God's oracle, because the word of God is a living thing. It is a lie. It will transform you the more you read it, the more you open up yourself unto the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is, it will begin to change you. It is God's desire for our minds to be renewed. In other words, reprogrammed, hallelujah, on kingdom things, the spirit of our minds. Our being renewed is for our transformation into the image of Christ. Once again, beloved, our being renewed is for our transformation into the image of Christ. In Romans chapter 12, you can turn your swords there and and. Please mark in your Bible these scriptures so that you can meditate upon them. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it reads, Do not be conformed to this world, this age. Believe it or not, beloved, this scripture is for us today. You know, it was a sister in the Lord I was talking about, and, and she was saying that the New Testament for, were for, for those people that lived in that time. That was for them. How sad. But, beloved, the word of God is eternal. It's forever. It applies to today as well. But it says here in Romans 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its, its external superficial customs. Ha, wow, that's powerful. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. It didn't say for the pastor. It didn't say for the prophet. It didn't say for the apostle. It says for you. Our minds, God wants us to have perfect sight of who he is and it's for us to benefit us this is the regenerated spirit of the believer when you become a child of God I mean when you really repent when you really understand what Christ did on Calvary for you that he paid a price that you deserved, that we deserved. And you come and you truly admit, Lord, I need someone to save me, to rescue me. Christ done that for us. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, there's a lot of good people in this world that have good hearts. And, and and I was led to believe if you do good works, you do good deeds, that, oh, oh you're, you're going to heaven. But, beloved, it's not our works that saves us. It's our faith, trust, and belief, leaning on, relying on Christ the Messiah to save us. He paid the price. And when you get this revelation in your heart and in your mind, what he really did for you, then comes the transformation in your spirit. Hallelujah. In your regenerated spirit, that is, which is mingled with the indwelling spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Such a mingled spirit spreads into our mind, thus becoming the spirit of our mind. 
It is, in su- it is such a spirit that we are renewed for our transformation. The transformation takes place through and by the Holy Spirit that comes to indwell our spirit. Hallelujah. And beloved, this sometimes it happens overnight. Sometimes it don't. You don't have to wait until you're good to receive the gift of God, to receive the Holy Spirit. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit coming to indwell in you. Hallelujah. That he, God, may bring forth the transformation. Glory to God. Within your heart, it all starts in the heart first. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 reads, And he, and do not be drunk with wine, and which is dissolutionist, but be filled with the Spirit. And how can we be filled with the Spirit? Glory to God. That's praying and praying in the Spirit. In other words, pray in your natural tongue, your natural language, and pray in the Spirit. To be drunk with wine is to be filled in the body. And we are to, the body is dead, hallelujah, because of what Christ has done. We had died, hallelujah, with Christ. And if you were baptized, that baptism represented you being buried with Christ. Hallelujah. And when you come up out of the water, you are being raised with Christ. Whereas to be filled in the spirit, talking about our regenerated spirit, not God's spirit, but our regenerated spirit, is to be filled with Christ. Christ wants to come and make his home, his abode in your spirit. Unto the fullness of God, it says, to be drunk with wine in our physical body causes us to become desolate. But to be filled in our spirit with Christ, with the fullness of God, causes us to overflow with Christ in speaking, in singing, in in, in playing psalms, and in giving thanks to God. When we are filled with the spirit of God, when it's overflowing, where the Psalms 23 says that he may anoint us, that that the anointing will... Uh, overflow, when it overflows, beloved, you can't help but rejoice in God because it's a spiritual thing. Hallelujah. He wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it also causes us to subject ourselves to one another. When you are truly, truly yielded to the Spirit of God, there is no division. There is no separation. There is no, oh, I'm better than you, because there's only one spirit, beloved, only one. There's, a, there's only one spirit that can transform you, and that's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ that dwells in our heart. Now, mind you, there is other spirits in this world, glory to God, that are generic, hallelujah, to the Holy Spirit. There are many Different spirits, voices in this world that are generic, that are not the true voice of God. But when we study the scriptures, when we go into the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to come and teach us, to give us revelation of what Christ is saying to us, what are you saying to me, Lord? Teach me how to apply what you are saying in my life. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8, which reads, which he caused to abound to us in all wisdom and prudence. God will cause his wisdom, that revelation, to abound in you in all wisdom and prudence. God's grace is not only rich, but also abounding. Such grace makes us an and an inheritance to God. We are his inheritance and qualifies us to inherit all that God is. Because we are children of God, we inherit all that God is when we begin to really seek him, desire him, crave after him. Hallelujah. 
God wants to fill us with his wisdom. Wisdom is what is within God for planning and proposing a will concerning us. We have to seek God to know what his will is concerning us. Wisdom was mainly for God's plan in eternity and produced uh, produced the will in Christ. Christ followed his father's will. Prudence is mainly for God's execution of his plan in time. What God planned in eternity in his wisdom, he is now executing in time in his prudence. We are the result of what God had planned. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, which reads, By means of all prayer and petition, praying at every time in the Spirit, and watching unto this in all perseverance and petition concerning all the saints. Beloved, this is our regenerated spirit, and dwelt by the Spirit of God that will pray for the saints. It is by it may be considered the mingled spirit. Remember that, beloved, that the Holy Spirit is mingled with our spirit. The spirit that is our spirit mingled with God's spirit in praying and ministering to one another, ministering to the lost, ministering to the sick is the Holy Spirit mingled with our spirit. The main faculty that we should use is this spirit, the Holy Spirit mingled in ours. See, when we begin to do things out of ourselves, we can really mess it up. We can mess up people's lives. We can destroy people's lives when we are not led by the spirit. Even when it comes to teaching, we got to be led by the spirit because we would lead people wrong. Hallelujah, so much false teaching in our world today. And Paul said, do not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. There's all kind of doctrine that is going forth and not one concerning having a relationship with Christ. I could care less about the history of the past. The past is the past. I can't go back and I can't change it. But I care about my relationship with Yahweh. I care about my relationship with Yeshua, with Christ, the Messiah. I want to have that intimate relationship with him. Glory to God. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, it reads, In him all the treasures of divine wisdom, comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and lie hidden. They are hidden in Christ. And in order for us to get these things, we have to walk in a relationship with him. Hallelujah. According to history, the influence of the Gnostic teaching which included Greek philosophy, invaded the Gentile churches in Paul's time and is doing it again. History is repeating itself. Hence, the apostle told the, Colossia, the Colossians that all the treasures of genuine wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. This is the spiritual wisdom and knowledge of the divine economy concerning Christ and the church, his bride. Wisdom is related to our spirit, and knowledge is related to our mind. We must be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Christ is coming back for a bride, beloved, that has a relationship with him. Hallelujah. Back to the same question, B, we must pray that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened to know the hope of his calling. Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, my time is running out, and um, I would like to assign uh, answer B to one of you all. I will assign this to uh, Janine. Hallelujah. 
for the answer. Pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened to know the hope of his calling. Next time we come together, uh, we're gonna, next Sunday we come together, not this Sunday. I'm going to put the calendar on so you all can see when we'll be back for this study. But Janine, can you study? Hallelujah. Can you bring forth a message concerning this topic? Pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened to know the hope of his calling. And uh, Sister Lisa, can you bring forth after Janine um, the answer C, pray to know the riches of the glory of, of his inheritance in the saints. And I will be emailing you with these topics. So I would like to hear from um, my, my sisters in Christ uh, mm -hmm. on this study of preparation of the bride. Uh, it's, it's an awesome teaching. If you know of anyone that, that wants to know more about Christ, that wants to come into that relationship with him, by all means, invite them to the study because this is going to be a very long study. I'm praying that, that the, will, the will of the Father be done concerning this study, that we will complete the whole entire book. Hallelujah. Uh, now we're going to have questions. We're going to go into questions and answer sequence. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you, Father, that through your word and through the Holy Spirit, we are being transformed into your image, Christ. We thank you, Yeshua, for what you have done on Calvary for us, that you made the way for us to be able to come before the throne of grace, that we can come before the Father, hallelujah, and sit at his feet. We thank you for the word that is rich, that is able to transform us. And we thank you, Father, for this study today. And we ask that your will be done in the lives of Janine and Lisa and myself, that you would reveal your will to us, O Lord, that you would show us what our call is, what our purpose is, O Father, that we may be able to bless others, Father. And Lord, teach us how to walk in the Spirit how to walk in this new revelation, this new wisdom, the spirit of revelation, Lord, that you, Father, will pour it out in us. We receive it, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for your word, Lord, that is able to transform our hearts and our minds into the image of Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna play another song before we end. Hallelujah. I'm gonna play another song before we close out. Uh, before I stop the recording, and then we can talk. Your 
beloved, our king, who is getting ready to come back for his bride, and we want to be prepared and ready for our bridegroom. I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. You are beautiful, Lord. You are beautiful. And we thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, the Christ, amen.